Should the church speak about moral, social, and political issues? Should Christians be involved in oh, politics? That's what we're going to talk about on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. Stay tuned. Whenever you talk about the political issues going on in our country today and whenever you speak out about things that are of a social, moral, governmental import, very often Christians and ministers will say, well, the church is not supposed to be involved in politics. Hi, Alex McFarland here. Welcome back to another edition of Truth for a New Generation. In just a few moments, we're going to meet a pastor that is definitely involved in politics, uh, running for office and speaking about moral and social issues. And, you know, whenever we talk about this, I've got to think about the history of our country. You know, it's, it's my privilege to teach on the history of the Constitution and how the American Revolution played out. And really, it was the church, uh, the American Revolution and the birth of our country and the writing of the Declaration of Independence ultimately coalescing into that glorious document, the U.S. Constitution, it really was driven along by Christians. It was. There was one group called the Sons of Liberty in 1765. The Sons of Liberty, uh, they're not talked about much today, but they reacted to something called the Stamp Act. There had been a taxation stamp put on like every object in life. And finally, one group, just one of many that were started, the Sons of Liberty, they pushed back against Britain's just oppressive, immoral taxation. And that was something that laid the groundwork for the American Revolution. But there were, there were Christians, there were ministers, there were pastors of churches, and they conscripted soldiers for the Continental Army. And I'm saying that because our history has been from out of the Christian church came the movement for our, our government and our liberties. And again today, if this country is going to be set right in the 21st century, it's going to be Christians, people that love God and truth that lead the way in this regard. Hey, I've got a book here. I want to tell you about this book. This is Tabor's Medical Encyclopedia and Dictionary. This belongs to my wife. It was one of her textbooks in nursing school. And I don't know why I was flipping through this one day, Tabor's Medical Encyclopedia, and I came across a term. I thought, what is that? Encephalitis lethargica. Encephalitis lethargica. It's sleeping sickness. You've heard of a bug bite or a tsetse fly that causes people to go into a stupor. And I was reading about encephalitis lethargica, and it says uh, a stupor, just a dullness, inability to think critically, and sleeping sickness. And I said, you know, that's what the church in America has right now, encephalitis lethargica. Listen, if you're a believer in Christ and you believe the Bible, you are supposed to stand for truth. You're supposed to be passionate for truth. You're supposed to know right from wrong. And you're supposed to understand that our mission in life is not just to live and wait out our time. Okay, I've gotten saved. I'm a Christian. Now I just sit around until the trumpet sounds or I die and go to heaven. No, until we get to heaven, we are on mission for God. And we're supposed to be salt and light and make a difference, not in a lethargic state, just ride out the clock. And I, I want to say that part of the reason that we do this show and we do our radio broadcast and we publish books like the brand new book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers, we do our summer camp. We've got our Truth for New Generation camp coming up July 17 through 22nd. 2022 is because we're not supposed to be in a sleep or a stupor. No, we're supposed to be on point for God and country to know truth, to proclaim truth, to stand for truth, and yes, to defend truth. 
Well, we're here to help you do that. And when we come back, you're going to meet a very special friend, E.W. Jackson. Stay tuned. We're back after this. Have you ever wanted to raise your hand during a sermon? Well, here's your chance. Hi, Alex McFarland here from the nationally syndicated radio program, Exploring the Word. For more than 10 years, my co-host, Bert Harper, and I have taught scripture and answered hundreds of Bible questions. We've compiled a brand new book of the top 100 Bible questions from listeners of all ages, from questions about supposed Bible contradictions to apologetics facts that prove the truths of scripture. This new book features practical content that will make the Bible come alive for you. Can we really be sure that God exists? Are there contradictions in the Bible? I need a book that will help me understand the Bible better. There is so much good content in this book. 100 Bible Questions and Answers, published by Broad Street Publishers and available online at your local bookstores and also through afastore.net. Welcome back to Truth for a New Generation. Alex McFarland here. Oh, I am so excited for the guest that you're about to meet. And let me say as we bring this uh, dear friend and colleague to the microphone, you know, over the years in hundreds of events, conferences, broadcasting, uh, it's been my privilege to have a a lot of speakers, uh, every household name you've ever heard of in conservatism and Christianity, we've been privileged to work with. But I've never been more excited about the life and ministry of my dear friend, Bishop E.W. Jackson. He is a graduate of Harvard Law School. He's not only an attorney, he's a minister, pastors a church, but he is one of the great voices of truth in our time. We recently had him at a conference in South Carolina, one of our national conferences, and I'm telling you, it's been a week, and all I'm doing is trying to keep up with the emails from people who said, oh my goodness, Bishop E.W. Jackson is the greatest communicator I've ever heard. Alex, please bring him back. It's great. We're profoundly honored to have him on the program right now. And uh, Bishop Jackson, I know you're a busy man, so I want to say thank you for making time to be with us today on the broadcast. Alex, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be with you and, and to be a part of the great work that you're doing for the kingdom of God. So thank you for inviting me. Well, well, thank you, my friend. You know, you and I are both ministers, and our job is to share the gospel of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do that. I do that. But one of the things that, that bound us as brothers, we love America, don't we? Amen. In fact, that's one of the things I talked about uh, on, uh, at your co- conference last, is that America really is a gift from Almighty God. It is not idolatrous or off for us to honor that gift, because in honoring the gift, we honor the God who gave it to us. So yes, I, I love this country. I know you do too as well, Alex, deeply. And I, and I seek to do whatever the Lord would have me do to help make sure that this country remains a nation that is committed to him. How concerned are you at this moment for the future of our country? And let me be specific, really um, the future of our constitution. H- how concerned are you for, for what lies ahead? Profoundly concerned, Alex, profoundly concerned. You know, I often reflect back, I served in the United States Marine Corps, I often reflect back on raising my hand and taking an oath to the Constitution of the United States. I remember it. And I, I'd learned a lot in the Marine Corps about duty to our country. But you know, when I got saved, which was about six years later, God impressed upon me something entirely different, which is that the freedom that we enjoy in this nation, the, the success we've enjoyed, has not been because we're genetically superior people, but because the hand of God has been on our nation. And they've always been those prayer warriors have been seeking God's face and asking him for mercy and asking him to guide our country. It's not that we've been perfect, but we have been principled and we have continually sought to do better as God would have us do. And now I see, Alex, that there are forces in this country who wanna separate us from God. They wanna separate us from the Bible. They want to separate us from any kind of faith in Jesus Christ, and they want to create a kind of socialist, Marxist-based collectivist system, and it is counter to everything that made us the greatest nation on earth. If our founders had founded the kind of nation people want to try to create now, 
America would be a footnote of human history. Yeah. Uh, so we, we can't let them do it. You know, I was reading uh, several polls this morning in, in prepping for our conversation. And over the last decade, openness to socialism has approximately doubled, uh, if, if the polls are to be believed. And when asked why, uh, why would socialism maybe be an option on the table, the number one reason given by adults surveyed is equality. So, so talk about this. Uh, is equality a benchmark that we should shoot for? Not in the perverse way that they make it. Our founding fathers said that we are all created equal and endowed by our creator with inalienable rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But that is an equality before God. He loves us all. He cares about us all. But Alex, there is no such thing as an equality in life. You've got gifts that I don't have, will never have. I may have gifts that somebody else doesn't have. We're not equal in that sense. And therefore, the things that we want in life, the things that we desire in life are never going to be the same. So this idea that everybody ought to be the same, we ought to have the same income, we ought to have the same uh, position in life somehow, we ought to live in the same kind of house, we ought to, I mean, it, it's, it's really a totalitarian idea that, that behind it really lies the motive of controlling everything and everybody. It is because you can't make everybody equal. I often say, you know, the Bolsheviks railed against the Rolls Royces and the magnificent houses uh, that the czar lived in and that the elites of Russia drove. And then when they took over, guess what they did? Took those houses <laughs> and took those Rolls Royces for themselves. So there's just no such thing as equality. What they're really getting at, I think, is totalitarian control over everything and everybody. You know, Bishop, um, preaching, and we, we started out this ministry a long time ago, and uh, I will tell you, the, the formative years of this ministry, I was very much in the Deep South, and I mean, I was in some conservative, conservative, uh, the, the most rural of settings you can imagine, and my, my hand to God, I, I've stayed in the homes of, of independent Baptists, and I mean, as right-wing evangelical as it gets. My hand to God, I never, I have never once heard the N-word used in any of those circles. Uh, but I have heard people say, uh, I want to keep what I earn. I don't want the government to spend my money on social programs that uh, reward inactivity. So here's my question. Uh, is, is it racist to expect everybody to work the way I have to work. I've got to work a job to pay my bills. And what I'm hearing from conservative America is, is not racism that I hate this ethnicity or, or we want these people kept in their place. I'm not hearing that at all. But what I am hearing is, is frustration that the government is spending my money for programs and initiatives that we find morally unacceptable. Is that racist? No, it's not. And of course, we don't mean, I know you don't mean it, I don't mean to deny the, the history of our country. We have gone through periods where racial ideology were, were, was very predominant in, in a lot of people's thinking, not everybody, of course. Uh, and that's, that is part of the American story. I've mentioned that my uh, great-grandfather and great-grandmother were slaves and sharecroppers in Orange County, Virginia. But I love this country because our Judeo-Christian values and principles are were constantly pricking away at our national conscience, even from the very earliest stages of our country, to say to us, you cannot subjugate people based on the color of their skin or any basis and call yourself a Christian. And so I, I just want to testify, as you just did, Alex, and a lot of people get upset with me when I do this. My wife and I have scoured our own background, and we've said there's never been a moment when we felt we were held back because of the color of our skin. I've never been mistreated by a police officer. I've never been called out of my name by anyone. Uh, so our experience as Americans of African ancestry is very different than what the left is trying to promote, which is 
all white people are oppressors, all black people and quote unquote people of color. And you know how much I hate that term because I've never met a person without color. You've got color. I've got color. Our colors are just somewhat different, <laughs> you know, but but this idea that you're either an oppressor or you're the oppressed is a Marxist idea. And so, look, I think the country, by and large, is past racism. Alex, I really do. I think we're over it. But there are forces that don't want to let us get over it. They want to keep pounding away at it. I just read an article this morning about Wellesley Public Schools. They're actually trying to teach students in affinity groups now where you have the Black group over here, the Asian group over here, the Indian group over here. And, oh, by the way, if you're white, you're not allowed in any of these groups. So they're promoting racial division and tribalism. Yeah, that's segregation. It is segregate, and it's evil, Alex. It's evil, but yet that's what they're promoting, even in our public schools. Well, well, exactly. And so, folks, if you're just tuning in, this is Truth for New Generation Television. We're talking with Bishop E. W. Jackson, Harvard-educated attorney and founder of StandAmerica.us. Do I have your URL correct? StandAmerica.us. StandAmerica.us. Yes. Uh, tell us about that organization, if you would. Well, the name of the organization is STAN, Staying True to America's National Destiny. So it's an acronym. And I founded it, Alex, after Barack Obama was elected president, because I really believed, although I hoped I was wrong, I really believed that he was going to do a great disservice to our country on a number of levels, which included creating more racial division. I mean, everybody, I think, had the hope. Well, just maybe this first black president of the United States will bring us together uh, and unify us as a nation across racial and cultural lines, I suspected that it was going to be the opposite. And so Stan was created to bring Americans together across racial and cultural lines to uphold our Judeo-Christian values and principles. And we've been working at that now for about 13 years. Uh, we've been bringing people together, what we call One Nation Under God's Services, where we, we honor our founding fathers and we include some of the black heroes of our nation and we talk about the things that unify us rather than the things that divide us as a country. Right now, we're working on a project called Awakening Hearts and Minds, in which we're going into these urban inner city areas where violence is rampant and trying to help people understand that left wing ideology, Black Lives Matter, Antifa are only doing them a disservice because more of their children and more of their community members are dying than ever were killed at any point by any police. And so we're trying to help people understand you've got to stop following that kind of leadership because it's only to your own detriment. So, so Stan is doing a number of different things. We support law enforcement, for example. We have Stan with law enforcement. Um, we've got just a, a number of aspects to the organization. We've got a 501c3, which is a standamerica.us, but we've also got a 501c4 and a PAC. So we get involved in the cultural and the political issues. What would you like to see uh, ordinary citizens do, um, maybe, maybe some of whom really have no experience getting into the public square, but uh, give us an assignment about how people like ourselves that love God and country, what can we do to make a positive difference? Oh, well, well, look, the obvious one, and I don't say this glibly, is serious, is to pray. You've got to pray specifically for our country. You know, people say to me, why, can, why are you so optimistic about America? Things are so bad. And I say, I'm optimistic because I pray and I believe that God answers prayer. And, uh, you know, the Bible says in Psalm 2, ask of me and I will give you nations. And I often say, I've asked God for just one nation, <laughs> my nation, the United States of America. And I don't believe that God will say no to me. Uh, and I know millions across this country are praying. So that's number one. Number two, though, Get engaged in the political life of your community because the, the politics is reflecting the degeneration in the culture and Christians have got to bring salt and light into that area. Run for school board, run for city council or support somebody who you believe in to do so. Uh, get involved in who's running for delegate or state senator in your state or who's running for Congress in your district. Uh, we've got to get fully engaged and involved and then support organizations like you, like me that are out here on the front lines and need all the help we can get to do what we are doing. Uh, right now, for example, part of my organization is doing advertising in Virginia because as you know, Virginia has been the epicenter of this big 
fight with parents between school boards and parents. The federal government is now calling out the Secret Service and the FBI to investigate the parents. And we're siding with those parents because parents have a right to determine the kinds of things that are taught to their children in school and to have their children not be indoctrinated with a bunch of leftist Marxist nonsense, but actually educated in math and science and reading and writing and history. And sadly, that's not what's happening right now. So, so get, get involved in the process. And I've just given you several ways you can plug in. Amen. And, and we've got to be in it for the long haul. We know, look, the Lord is coming back and uh, Christ may return today, but we've got to keep on and have the long view. The, the left does. Oh, my goodness. The left, they've got just, they're willing to just be unrelenting. Um, say a word about the commitment for uh, some permanence in our commitment to our values. Well, look, this is this is an uh, an eternal commitment that we have. You know, I often say, Alex, people call me a, a, the the left does a a right wing extremist, and then I say, the problem is, I've been redefined because twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago, I stood for the same things I stand for now. <laughs> I, I haven't changed at all. I haven't moved. And then I was mainstream. I was kind of middle of the road. But what they've done is they've shifted the culture to the point where if you believe in God, you believe a family is made up of a husband, wife, mother, father, and children, you believe that people are born with a particular gender that God assigns, you are by definition a right-wing crazy. If you believe that skin color doesn't matter, oh, you are definitely a right-wing extremist. Uh, They've changed definitions on us. We have got to come back to those foundational principles that don't change based upon the word of God. And you know, If the word of God hasn't changed, Alex, neither should we, and we should continue to stand no matter what. Well, I appreciate you so much. We're almost out of time. Uh, Attorney, Pastor E.W. Jackson, thank you for being on TNG. We look forward to when you and I can visit again soon. Thank you, Alex. God bless you. Stay tuned, everybody. We're back after this. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis. You need to take a step of faith and start believing God for something big. God made every one of you for something special. The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. Welcome back to Truth for a New Generation. I'm so grateful for my friend, attorney and pastor E.W. Jackson. And I want to encourage Christians, churches, ministers to speak truth and to talk about the issues of the day. You know, June 12th, 1788, James Madison said this, listen, there is not a shadow of right in the Constitution that empowers the government to intermeddle with religion, end of quote. Now, what do you mean by that? But look, do not worry that the U.S. government can silence you, pastor and church. The founders, uh, they didn't believe for a moment that the government had a right to muzzle the church, but they absolutely believed. In fact, they counted on the church to help speak truth, to keep us on track as a country. You know, in 1935, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, uh, he said this, he worried, and I want to want to speak to the issue of the government controlling people. He said that government programs, he called it the dole, D-O-L-E, the dole, we would call it welfare. He said the dole is a narcotic that crushes the human spirit. And he said a large portion of unemployed and unemployable people have been forced to, quote, the relief rolls. Now, FDR said, the burden on the federal government has grown with great rapidity. He said, here we have a human as well as an economic problem. But FDR, he himself who initiated many social programs, he said that the dole, the relief rolls are, quote, a narcotic that crushes the human soul and is inimical, that is harmful, 
to the American people, end of quote. Now, why am I telling you this, folks? We have got to be a free America that understands life's mission is to know God, to experience all that God in, empowered you to experience. We can't look to the government to make things equal or create opportunity. We've got to understand that God has given you the ability to make a way for yourself. That's the blessing of life. That's the promise of America. Like no other nation, Americans have lived under the blessing of prosperity and liberty. These gifts are part of the heritage of a country grounded in the truths of Scripture and given by God to advance the gospel at home and abroad. In these days of moral and spiritual confusion, maintaining the freedom to express our faith in the public square has never been more important. The American Family Association, working to preserve religious liberty for generations to come. Here is the biblical bottom line. In the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 26, it says, God has made of one blood all people, tongues, tribes, and nations. And you know, by believing in Christ, our sins are forgiven and we're saved. The Bible says, out of the human race, God has called out a people for himself. And we're of one blood. There's one race, the human race. And the answer to racism, the answer to inequality, is not Marxism, it's not secularism, it's not enforced government programs. It is recognizing that we're all people. We're made in God's image. And while God loves us, God does expect us to work, to live morally, to do right. And that's the truth the world needs to hear. And it's got to be the people of God that share this truth. So we began this show by asking, should the church be involved in politics? Should we speak to such issues? Of course. If we who know the true and living God, and we believe his word. If we don't speak truth, if we don't defend what's right and good, who is? So Christian and, yes, pastors, stand for truth and be bold and be courageous. Hey, do you know, if you go on Amazon.com and Google my name, you're going to find about 30 books and products, one of which is 10 Issues That Divide Christians. I talk about American exceptionalism and all of these issues we've been discussing. Check out this book. If you would support our ministry with a gift of at least $50, a tax-deductible gift, and you can give securely online at my website, alexmcfarland.com, or you can write to us for $50 uh, of your support, we're going to send you the brand new book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers, the kinds of questions we get from listeners, your, your gift for at least $50 of contribution. If you would make that support gift at least $75, we'll include our awesome apologetics t-shirt, Better Living Through Apologetics. You're going to love it. Specify what size you'd like, medium, large, extra large, your gift the book and the shirt for at least $75. I do want to remind you that our camp is coming up next summer, July 17th through 22nd, our youth camp. So pray, tell somebody about the show. Thanks for watching. God bless you.